Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, Paolo here again. Uh, today another video in a series of good questions, good answers. So I have was approached by one of the members of uh, Eastgate Freedom Group, uh, Dylan. He is uh, very new and uh, fresh to this hobby and especially to DIY. So his question was, Pav, uh, how do I solder on uh, straight connectors? You know, the ones on the mortise or the uh, ESCs. The banana connectors, straight connectors, uh, gold-plated connectors, whatever the hell you want to call them. So obviously I will not uh, stand by uh, knowing that someone is struggling. So here we go Dylan, and for everyone else, this is what you need and this is how you solder on the connector. And again guys, sorry for reminding this over and over, but I just feel bad that all these videos or most of the videos are already on my channel, so uh, some things you see in the video are already covered. Uh, the soldering uh, is already covered, but again, take a look. Look how many videos I've got. At least it's just going and going and going, so just look for it. It's there, you know. But for you, Dylan, I'll do it again. So let's cover some tools you will need. Okay, so minimum what you will need uh, to solder on, obviously a soldering iron. Uh, it's a plug-in electric one, for instance. I prefer like a higher uh, wattage one, uh, something like 65, uh, 70 or 80, preferably. Um, so one of them, or I do quite like the gas uh, filled one, but I don't use the actual uh, like a tip. I use it as a blowtorch, yeah? I already got a video on how to use one of these. It's my favorite way of doing the uh, straight connectors because you just uh, put a flame on it and it melts uh, the solder very, very nicely. But since you asked about the soldering iron, so I'm gonna use my uh, a bit of a more expensive soldering iron station, uh, WER 99D. It's an adjustable temperature one, but again, full reviews on my channel. Take a look. So it's comfortable because it's got really good silicone cable. It's not my way, it's small and it's really, really powerful. But you can use any other soldering iron. Out of the materials, so obviously, you will need some solder. Yeah, and the photo you, you sent me, the solder was not uh, pre-fluxed, okay? That's why I said you should get yourself some flux. So, take a look, guys. If you get, like, a more expensive solder, uh, look uh, for the, uh, the writing on it. It will tell you that it does have flux core. Flux is the chemical that will strip up or clean up the surface of the copper or the brass and let the solder stick. And this is what you're after, okay? Uh, so, uh, if not flux, I do also like using a uh, the uh, acid paste. Yeah, this is for like electronics. It works really well. Uh, or you can use a uh, traditional soldering flux. You know, it comes in a can like that, and yeah, it's like pasty type of thing. One thing to mention: if you solder a lot, uh, use a mask because the fumes ooh, they are quite quite bad and toxic. Okay, so you'll see the smoke coming up. Uh, let me just get the camera a bit closer. So, uh, what you need as well is you don't have to, but I really like this little device. Again, I already covered this in uh, uh, in my videos. I think my brightness needs to be a bit better. Okay, so light is a bit better now. So, guys, one of these they're quite cheap, and uh, you can get these uh, on eBay or Amazon. This is to like hold your XT90 uh, connectors or your straight connectors all the way around. And the uh, benefit for it is that it takes the heat away from actual connector if it's next to 90 and also you don't burn your burn your fingers uh, like you know holding it up so I got full review of this but if you don't uh, want to get one of these there's an easier trick and so you take your uh, connector you want to solder then you take a uh, rubber band and then you take like pliers anything you've got and you hold uh, the connector with the pliers and then you just wrap the rubber band on the handles and this is going to keep the handles shut so now your connector is fixed you know why because obviously it's gonna get all hot and uh, yeah you don't want to be holding that obviously make sure that it's not touching the you know surface you're soldering on I'm only doing it like quickly to show you guys so that's it, so this is it. And then then you take your cable, yeah? So whatever silicone cable you're using, so this here is uh, 12 gauge. 
I do use a, a proper electrical cutter. It's so much easier to use this, you know, it just cuts the cable neat. You take the uh, outer uh, silicone off first and all the cable gets all spread up and then you can trim it up with it. If you do not have, let me just steal this. If you do not have a black particular electrical cutter, what you can do, you can just use a knife, you know, clean, uh, cut the silicone all the way around until you hit the, uh, the metal, you know, the internal, pull the silicone off, and then in order to trim up all these uh, internal strands, you just use uh, ordinary scissors, okay? So what you need to do is you need to expose enough of uh, the internal um, a co um, copper or whatever you might have in your cable, most, most of the times it's a copper, that it slides into the connector and does not protrude too much. You see here, that is too much, okay? Otherwise, you're gonna have this really hard coppery buildup that will be quite fragile. So you trim it back. There we go. Yeah, that's my video on the, on the background. That's when uh, uh, Rad came to see me. So now you check it again. So it's enough to go in and the silicone almost touching the uh, connector. So that's perfect. So next step, what we need to do, we're going to tin. That means we're going to apply some solder onto this cable and also onto internal part of that hole where the cable is going to slide into. Okay? So, what I normally do is I take the flux and I warm it up with the soldering iron and you can see it will turn all liquidy and I stick the cable in there and I warm it up just a bit more so now the cable gets coated with the flux and now you apply let me zoom in and now you apply the solder onto your cable so start warming up the cable first yeah not the solder straight away because cable is thick it's going to take a bit of time for uh, the cable to warm up otherwise the solder will just run off then you introduce the solder and what you will see that the solder is kind of disappearing in between the strands don't drive it too much because otherwise you will fill the solder up the cable into the into this part here you don't want that so now we have you have the solder all the way around the strands perfect so this is now tinned you put this on the side and now you do exactly the same with the connector but instead of instead of uh, obviously sticking the connector into the flux what I do is I warm up the flux and while while the flux is uh, liquidy what you do is you stick the solder in there and now you got a bit of flux on the tip of the solder okay here we go okay so now we're going to warm up the connector by just sticking the solder iron inside the connector it's going to take a bit of time especially if you have a uh, smaller solder iron so now connector is quite warm. Now you're going to introduce the solder itself. Normally at this point I already stick the, uh, the cable in there. But because I'm showing you guys. So now what you have is you have the solder inside the, uh, inside the uh, connector, inside the cup. You see that? Yeah. At this point you warm it up again. You make sure that it melts nicely. And now you're taking your pre-tint cable, yeah? And you put it inside and you start now warming up the cable. So now you're warming up 
this the connector and the cable together yeah and when you see the solder becoming nice and shiny and it needs to become shiny because that's when you know it's actually melting otherwise you will get the cold weld you're introducing more solder and you see it's just disappearing inside when you move the solder and iron away from the connector keep the cable in position you need to make sure that the solder turns uh, muddy or no muddy um, milky if you wish not shiny anymore that means it's, it's, it's gone off okay there we go now you got yourself a soldered connector what I do normally do is while because you'll have a bit of uh, a bit of flux uh, still like on the side a little bit so while it's still hot I just dip it in water and I wipe off uh, with the rag so it makes it nice and clean yeah because I'm filming guys it's a bit hard because normally it's quicker I just go bush 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 I got a cup of water I zip it in there after it gone off you know give it like whatever 30 seconds or so to for solder to actually cool off itself you know you don't want to shock it so it cracks let it cool off quite quite a lot it actually give it a minute and then you just put it in the water and wipe it off another thing works well is a um, like a like a like a uh, carburetor cleaner I just put it in the rag and I wipe it off because the flux is quite sticky you know and you want to get it off it's just nasty plus it's going to be affecting your copper later on so that's that and obviously you didn't ask this question but what you should do as well is get yourself a uh, kit of uh, a heat shrink tube and the connector now should get protected so now you put a heat shrink tube over the connector and also the cable yeah I normally like using like a hot air gun or the hair dryer because I don't know it just makes a neat job most of the people use lighter okay so if you don't have a heat gun I'll show you with the stuff you can use around the house so a lighter and don't put too much heat on it straight away do it from far away and you see it shrinking if you do it like too close it's gonna turn like black and nasty okay so when it starts warming it up you can see it's going to hug the cable and well protect it Sorry guys, it did not, it, no, normally the connector is nice and straight, but because I was videoing it, I kind of, you know, pulled the cable back a little bit, trying to look at the camera at the same time. But it should be nice and straight, but there's nothing wrong if it, if it comes in just a bit in an angle, because it is, it is still a solid connection, okay? Very, very solid. Before I actually use this on my skateboard, uh, what I do is I kind of, you know, tug on it, kind of, look at it inspect it making sure that it's not a cold cold solder you know and it nothing comes off and also that it's flexible okay this is this is quite important especially to me especially in the area where the cable will be moving because solder could travel all the way in and that becomes here a very hard bit because solder is already in and if it flexes on that point and the solder is in there it could potentially start breaking inside okay so do not like keep solder on it too long because it will just keep on feeding the solder through the cable up the cable okay so phew. so this is it for this video guys i hope you uh liked it i thought i hope really hope it was helpful dylan good luck and yeah if you got any questions or you're looking for a video maybe just ask me guys i'm on facebook i'm on instagram or on any of the video comments always check them so yeah, I'm here to help. Anyway, bye and DIY safely. <laughs>